Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And uh, today we are headed back out to beautiful Anza Borrego Desert. We're heading back towards the Borrego Mountain and then we are going to head north from San Felipe Wash into a wash called the Hills of the Moon. It's supposed to be really, really cool. I guess it's like a moonscape kind of thing. And from what I've heard, it gets a little challenging the further back you get in. It gets a little bit more narrow and there might be some fun stuff to check out there. So that is what we are doing today. A little bit of a maintenance update on the Jeep. As you can see, uh, we have no rocker protection anymore. Rock rails are off. We took these barricades off, uh, cleaned them up real nice, got them painted and ready to sell because we are slapping the VKS weld on sliders here. Those are going to be welded on uh, once we have an opportunity to do that. So next up, VKS weld on sliders. We'll get this all cleaned and prepped for that. Bring it over to my buddy Matt's house. <laughs> He's handy with a welder and we will get those sliders on and make the Blubicon rock ready once more. So a little side note, we'll call it some bonus footage for this video. Those of you who have been watching my channel for a while, you will know that last year we hit the Doozy Ursham Trail. It was an absolute blast. We had so much fun out there. Great times, great memories, lots of cool rocks, incredible scenery, and uh, the, almost everything about that trip was perfect. I say almost because on night one, when we pulled into camp and I started unloading gear, I decided to reposition my Jeep a little bit, forgot that I left the tent on the ground. It's one of those pop-up uh, instant tents. And uh, yeah, backed over it with the Jeep, ran over it, crushed it, and basically destroyed all of the little parts and pieces that kind of make that instant tent uh, sort of stay together. So I had to come up with some creative ways to keep the tent um, upright slash elevated uh, so that I could actually use it and make my way in the tent and out of the tent uh, so that I wasn't sleeping on the ground under the stars at night. Uh, so luckily I was able to figure that out, but I did have my eyes open for a replacement. So fast forward a few months, I'm looking around for some Black Friday deals and I found one. Check out this cool tent from Sam's Club. It's the uh, members mark and it is the cool big six person instant cabin tent. Very, very similar to what my buddy Blake has. You saw his in the video. I think it's like an orangish yellow one. Uh, this one was in blue to match the Blubicon and uh, $120 over on Sam's Club. However, I found an internet retailer uh, that has an eBay store and I guess he's got hundreds of these that uh, he somehow got from Sam's and uh, he was blowing them out for $51 on Black Friday. So I was able to pick one up for $51 plus tax, free shipping, couldn't pass that up. Matter of fact, he still has them up on his eBay page now for 59 bucks. And so um, if you wanna get one of these, go over there and check it out. So one of the things I knew I wanted was another instant tent. I loved how fast and easy it was to set up my old tent. So uh, this one claims to set up all by itself in a minute with one person. Um, it's a pretty big tent. I don't know how easy that's gonna be. So I decided to bring it into the backyard, fold it out, and uh, well, let's see how we do. All right, well, the box says this set is an instant tent that sets up in 60 seconds and only needs one person to do it. Let's put that to the test with me. All righty, well, if you've got your stopwatches, let's see how quickly I can do this. All right, how'd I do? Put the 
timer in, the, in there below. We'll see if I beat 60. Well, hey guys, there you go. Absolutely digging this tent. It's pretty big, actually. Once it's um, been opened up and, and guy lined out and stretched out, uh, the interior space of this is uh, 10 feet across by nine feet deep, which is about the size of a small spare bedroom uh, in your house, maybe. So lots and lots of room in there, plenty of room to stretch out and get all my gear and everything that I need. Um, standing up in it, it's just about as, as tall as me. I think it was about five foot eight or five foot nine. You could stand up in there and not hit your head on the ceiling. So uh, I'm super happy with it. There's a link in the description below to the eBay store. Still got them there for $59 free shipping and tax only. You should go get one. Damn good deal. All right. Well, with that being said, let's head back out to Anza Borrego Desert and check out Hills of the Moon Wash. All right. We're back out here in the Anza Borrego Desert behind Borrego Mountain. And we are going to check out the hills of the moon. I'm guessing that's Fonts Point right there, pretty sure. And so this trail kind of takes us through the Badlands, almost from what I understand to the very bottom base of Fonts Point. So time to go check that out, see what we can see. Okay, so as we enter the wash, um, Nothing too, uh, nothing too spectacular at this point. Everything in front of us so far, the first uh, half mile, pretty tame. Okay, we are just about a mile and a half in at this point and uh, starting to get interesting, interesting topography. We've got mud falls happening here. Starting to look very Badlands-y. What did you say? It's a uh, tight turn here. We'll see how things start to pan out over the next mile or so. As we go through, about another quarter mile in, Really starting to see sort of that moonscape feel. Uh, road's getting a little more washboardy through here, a little more rutted out from the rains. We're at about 12 psi, and I did disconnect the sway bar, so we're about as comfortable as could be. But, uh, yeah. pretty neat. Starting to see more coloration in the mountains. Some more of the greens and grays are coming through, contrasting with the red. You definitely do see a lot of the, um, so you got a great example of some uplift here. Obviously tectonic activity, some uplift. Really cool. You can see the striations in the rocks. That's a really nice example and all the layering of sandstone, you know, millennia over millennia. Oh, that's awesome. Just about two miles in now. Definitely cool looking scenery as you come through. The further in you get, the more dramatic the uh, color contrasts become. As you get closer to these formations, so still in two wheel drive. No need for four low or anything yet. Okay, we've reached our first actual obstacle. Looks like uh, this has been here a while. These tracks look pretty established. And uh, yeah, big old chunk came down, blocking the uh, the wash here. Even if this wasn't here, there's really not much, a whole lot of room to get through. So Janine's gonna give us a crawl here. So we're gonna show you uh, 
We're going to show you guys how easy it is to crawl with no feet. <laughs> so Janine's going to put it in first gear and let the engine do all the work. So she doesn't need to use clutch at all. This is just the Jeep and the transfer case and the transmission doing all the work. Oh, listen to those squeaky bearings. All right, I'm gonna hit those with some grease right now. Woo! Bluebacon is renamed the Squeakacon. Holy moly! Oh, that's too easy. Too easy. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, well, we've reached as, as far as we can go. There's a little split in the wash here, going up that way towards Fonts Point. Uh, no way to go. And same thing over here, really no way to go. So, that is the top of Fonts Point right there. So, don't really see anybody walking around. Anyways, let's get out of here. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, there you go. We made our way back out to the 4.8 miles to the road after completing the Hills of the Moon Wash. I will say this. If there is a place in this world that you could, wanted to go to uh, to see what it might be like to drive a lunar rover on the moon, uh, I don't think you could find a much better place than this. There were quite a few times when we were driving through these trails where I had to second guess myself if I'm still on planet Earth here. Uh, it was definitely really cool. The colors were amazing. Uh, the steeper the walls get as you go back was definitely very dramatic. A lot more undercuts. You start to see a lot more of the uh, Badland you know, just crumbling apart in front of you as, uh, you know, rocks and sandstone were have to be navigated around. But uh, yeah, you know, if you're gonna go check it out, make sure you bring a camera and most importantly, don't do what we did. Uh, don't go alone, bring somebody with you just in case. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.